Imagine that you are powerful beyond your wildest dreams. Your own unique and powerful soul is your very essence, leading you closer to the true source of beauty, magnificence, and wonder that is found deep within your being. Powerful Soul is about you. It's about helping you uncover the true nature of your soul. Once you understand the power of who you truly are, you will be unstoppable and you will begin to live your best life. This show is a tool to help you, once again, reclaim the power of your soul. No matter how hard I look, I'm still blind. It's not what you see. Hello and welcome to this episode of Powerful Soul. I'm your host, Lori Micah, and as always, I'm super glad that you're here, but especially glad that you're here today. This is a very special day. You've heard me talk in past episodes about my passed away loved one, Mark Abrahamian, and today is the eight year anniversary of his death. And I have long said his death was not only the worst thing that happened to me, but in a sense has been the best thing that happened to me because through his death, I have painted all of the paintings that I've shared with the world. And really this podcast is a continuation of him continuing to work with me from the other side. I've had powerful experiences of receiving signs from him. And I thought it very appropriate that today's episode be about medium experiences. And mediums have been the primary way that I've been able to get messages from Mark from the other side. I think it's a very powerful thing for your soul. And I'm really excited to share this with you today. What is a medium? A medium is a person who can connect to people who have left this earth plane and now reside on the other side. You'll hear them referred to in many different formats. So you might hear the term medium. You might hear the term psychic medium. You might hear the word intuitive. They're all really pretty much the same thing. And for each individual person, it's how they perceive their information. So some mediums do like to just connect to people who have died on the other side. Others do have the ability to interpret psychic information so they can give you information about what's going on in your life, uh, what, fu- what future your life is taking. Um, now in the last episode, if you joined us uh, talking about the help that you have, I talked about how your spirit team is around you and you need only ask them for help. But as powerful souls, we have lots and lots of resources of things that we can do for ourselves to increase our own power. And for me, one of these areas is talking to mediums. My journey with mediums began about 15 years ago. My first uh, medium that I ever spoke with was so evidential. The information was so overwhelmingly personal to me that there was no doubt in my mind that she was genuinely connecting to my passed away loved ones on the other side. So when you're looking for a medium, one of the things that you want to be looking for first and foremost is that they are giving you evidential information. So I'm not talking about general information. Anybody can say, oh, there's a passed away man. There's a man who died. There's a younger person who died. There's a woman who died. Uh, You have a grandparent who died because that would probably be true for almost everybody that you would say that to who lives on this planet right now. But a true medium, one who is really connecting to the other side, will not give you generalizations and they will not wait for your confirmations to continue on. You should be able to be completely silent for the majority of your reading if you would like to and still receive information that is very specific to you. Mediums like to work in in lots of different ways and I've had some mediums who like to spend a lot of time describing the soul that they're speaking to and connecting to and who that soul, uh, what the soul's physical features are. So it helps you understand who they're connecting with. I have other mediums that I've connected with who are very good at naming names. Now that's probably the most evidential you can get because it's difficult to just make up a name out of thin air. But you definitely want a medium who is giving you evidential information. And when I'm doing my own readings, having my own readings with mediums, 
I'm very careful not to feed the medium, which means giving them information that would allow them to give you a reading where you could look back on it later and say, oh, wait a minute, I kind of, um, I kind of held their hand and pulled them along and gave them too much information. So it's called feeding the medium. You actually don't want to do that because when you finish with a reading, you want to be able to look back on it, and listen to it. I always recommend that you record any medium sessions that you have because um, I think it's really important to be in the moment, the present moment while you're getting your reading. And if you have to sit there and jot down a bunch of notes, it's very difficult to connect to and listen to everything that they're saying to you in real time if you're so busy trying to remember what they just said and trying to write that down. It takes your mind in a different direction. So I always highly recommend recording your sessions. The other thing about mediums that I've come across, um, there are people who are afraid of this type of connection. Like how does somebody have the ability to connect with people who are no longer on this earth plane? To some people, if you haven't had an experience, that might seem scary. Or if you grew up in um, a very religious um, household, you might have been exposed to ideas from the Bible or from people that you um, trust who say that this is evil and this is bad and this is from the devil. So I want to clarify, first of all, in my podcast, my beliefs are my own beliefs. I'm just sharing ideas with you. It doesn't matter to me if you believe exactly how I believe. Everybody is on their own path and their own journey and whatever is true for you is true for you. And we all grow up with lots of different experiences. We all have lots of different influences. And I believe as you grow and evolve as a soul over time, what you think, what you believe, what you're drawn to drastically changes from year to year. I've said this before. I feel like every three to five years, I am a completely different person. That's because I read things. I'm exposed to different ideas from other people. I have my own personal experiences and all of those are in constant motion and change the way that we think, feel, and believe. So it's okay to believe whatever you want to believe. But I really and truly believe that a credible medium has absolutely nothing but love and good intentions because from my experience and from watching experiences of other people getting readings from mediums, these have the ability to heal people. When you experience a loss, it can be devastating. A death of a loved one brings us to our knees. And for some people, they curl up in a ball and they never recover. But for me, the ability to hear a message from my passed away loved one, where I know without a doubt that the medium I'm talking to is connecting to my passed away loved one, and they're telling me things like they love me, they know what's going on in my life, they're guiding me, they've never left me, they care about me, they want me to be happy. Or maybe if you had a loved one who died and you didn't get the chance to tell them goodbye, maybe you left things unsaid, maybe the last time you spoke to them, it was not a good conversation. I have over and over again seen mediums give readings to people where they said my passed away loved one heard everything that I communicated. There was nothing left unsaid or it didn't matter where you were. You would not have been able to stop the death of the person that you loved because it was just their time or you may have left things on a very bad note. Maybe you had a fight, maybe something bad happened. Maybe you said things that you wish you could take back. Your passed away loved ones don't have the attachment to negative issues in their new state of being on a soul level. They don't see things the same way that we see them in our human bodies. They see the bigger picture and they know that as a human, we get into circumstances where sometimes we say things we don't mean. We have, um, we get into fights, we have arguments and they forgive us. And I think that when we can connect to a medium and they can give us these very healing messages, I think it can change your entire life. I mean, imagine if you lost somebody 
and all you were um, thinking about related to them are these thoughts of guilt and sadness. I think when you connect with the medium, the messages that you hear are love. You hear that they're okay. However they died, it doesn't matter anymore. They're whole and perfect and beautiful and happy on the other side. And I think that that's nothing but healing. I don't see how messages from mediums in this way could be perceived as anything but good. Anything that helps your soul become more powerful, helps you feel more love is to me such a good thing. Okay. I have also had medium readings um, in a couple of different occasions where they've been scheduled and they've been canceled time and time again. And I think when these things happen, it's that you're not meant to have a reading either from that person or at that point in time, or maybe you're going to be um, drawn to somebody else, something else. I had an experience after Mark, my passed away loved one, died in 2012. I actually had a medium reading already scheduled and on the books before his death. And I was very excited to connect to this woman. She was a very credible, highly recommended medium. And the first reading approached and she canceled me. And we rescheduled in the second medium reading approach, and she canceled me. And the morning before my third medium reading, I had this incredible dream, which I talk about in my book, Signs Surround You, Love Never Dies. It was a dream where I was given information that I could not have possibly known. And because of that, because of her canceling the reading again that day for the third time, I was able to share this dream with a special person who was able to confirm information in, in the dream. And had I had that reading, I never would have talked about the dream. I would have talked about the reading. So sometimes things happen for a reason that we don't necessarily understand, but you'll be guided and directed to somebody who can help you and give you healing messages. So I'm going to talk about a person um, who is the very first medium that I've ever connected with. It's a woman named Mariah Rame. She lives in the Midwest. She's been doing readings for, boy, probably most of her life. And she is an absolutely incredible a medium reader. I had my first experience with her about 14 years ago in 2006. And it's interesting to listen to her while she's giving a reading because her cadence changes when she connects to spirit. She actually stops. You can hear her listening. You can hear as she's speaking, they're correcting her and changing words and she changes words up. It's really incredible to listen to her. I've had several readings with her. And the other thing I want to mention about medium readings is that I don't have a medium reading very often. So, for example, with Mariah, you know, I've getting, been getting readings for her with her for 15 years. I connected with her last in December of 2019, but I hadn't spoken to her for two years. I think if we begin to use medium readings as a crutch, as kind of a replacement for our own gut feeling and an intuition, I don't think it's good to lean on anything too much. It's it's meant to be a, a tool, a tool to help you and guide you. It shouldn't be something that you rely on so heavily that you now discount everything that you think, feel, and believe because your own gut and intuition and higher self does still guide you. But again, I do think mediums are an incredible source. I had the privilege several years ago of attending a seminar that Mariah set up. So I was in person with her. And one of the things that she was trying to teach the group is that our own intuition is very strong. And she strongly believes that every single person has the ability to connect with their own loved ones on the other side. She believes that this is not a special gift relegated to a select few people on the planet. She believes with practice and time, you can hone your own skills and abilities. And I know for me personally, I have definitely gotten much better at hearing my own guidance about hearing messages from my other, my passed away loved ones and certainly from receiving signs. But she um, had us all get together and partner up with somebody that we didn't know in the room. And she had us conduct this little exercise so that we could prove to ourselves that we all had psychic intuitive abilities. So I was paired up with a woman I didn't know. We were each asked to exchange 
an item that we were wearing or that had some special significance to us if we had brought something with us. So I gave her a ring that I was wearing and she gave me a ring that she was wearing. We were then asked to sit quietly for about five or 10 minutes and we were just to concentrate on the energy of the object that we were holding in our hands and we were to write down every message that popped into our mind. It didn't matter how silly it seemed. We were to write down everything we could think of. So we did this and it was my turn after the five minutes were up to um, share with this woman all of the impressions that I had received from holding her ring. I told her how I saw this house that was surrounded by a fence and there was a railroad track kind of back on the back property of the house, but it wasn't like a commuter type of train. It would be a cargo type of trains that would, would pass by on this track. And she told me that every impression I had was absolutely correct. And the other thing that had happened while I was holding her ring is I had a picture pop into my mind of a crown. And I just drew quickly this little crown and I made a little arrow and I wrote the words yellow or gold. Um, in my mind when I saw this crown, it was filled in as a yellow or gold crown. And I turned the picture, my page towards her and I showed her the picture and her mouth fell open and she reached down and rolled up her pant leg and showed me that she had a crown tattoo on her leg. <laughs> I think I almost fell off of my chair when I realized the intuitive ability that we actually really and truly do have. So it is a, a muscle in a sense, something that you have to exercise and connect to to get better at doing it. So it's kind of a fun little experiment you might wanna try. After Mark died in 2012, I really did step up my discovery path in trying to connect with him. He was one of the most profound deaths that I had ever experienced. And I was very lucky after he died in December to connect with Mariah. I had a reading with her for just 30 minutes to connect with Mark, where he came through giving me so much evidential information. There's no way it could be denied that she was connecting to him. Mark had long curly hair. She brought that up. She talked about him playing a musical instrument. She also noted that he took a cigarette and flicked it, which was funny because he was a smoker. He talked about how he knew certain things in my life. And then she said, it seems to me he's telling me that he died in September. And at this point in my reading, I became very confused. And I was thinking he had died at the end of August. And I said, no. No, he died in August. And she said, well, that's strange because he seems to think he died in September, the beginning of September. And I said, no, 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 he died in August. Like I'm arguing with her and she would not relent. She's like, no, he is very insistent. He died in September. And then all of a sudden it hit me. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, he did. He died September 2nd. It was true. So a good medium will stand their ground even when you're argu arguing against them because she was right. She was listening to Mark, the source on the other side, telling his story. And I had misremembered this really pertinent piece of information and she did not give up. So that's how you know a medium is good. They're not going to give up when you're contradicting what they're saying if they're really and truly hearing something from spirit. And one of the other things I thought was very funny is that Mark through Mariah said that he would be sending me signs, but he said he wasn't going to send me any dumb signs like cardinals or doves. And she said, he just started laughing. She said he got this grin on his face and he said, how about beavers? I'm going to send you beavers. And she said that was rotten and wrong, but it was very funny. And hand to God, after that, I started seeing beavers at a ridiculous amount. I mean, I don't even know anybody else who probably sees beavers as much as I do, but at that time, I had these three ponds that I would walk around, and all of a sudden, when I would rarely see beavers before, I was seeing them all the time. And sometimes, they would be swimming across the pond, and they would dive down in the water right when a lyric from a song played that was special to me. 
one day I went to go get a pedicure on Valentine's Day and I had brought a book with me to read while I was getting my pedicure. And as I was walking back towards the chair where I was going to be sitting, I saw a magazine that caught my interest and I grabbed it. And instead of reading my book as I had intended, I was thumbing through this magazine and all of a sudden there was a full page ad with a giant beaver I swear I can't make it up and it almost felt like a happy Valentine's Day message from him. So it's interesting that as spirits, when our loved ones die, they do not lose their personality on the other side. They retain who they were and how we knew them. And a good medium will be able to bring through somebody's personality so you can you can really connect to them. Even when I moved to Arizona and I thought, oh my gosh, there go all my chances of seeing beavers anymore. The very first day that I was living in Arizona, I went to Home Depot to go get some materials for a project I was working on. And the woman standing in the checkout line in front of me was wearing a sweatshirt that had a picture of a beaver on the back of it. So believe me, it doesn't matter where you live or what you're doing. When spirit wants to send you messages, they will. Mariah also told me that Mark would be sending me feathers and I have lots of different signs with feathers that happened over the years. And I've talked about a lot of these signs in my book, Signs Surround You, Love Never Dies. So if you would like to read more about the, the signs that I received from Mariah, you can certainly connect with them on my book. Mariah also has a website called Mariah the Medium, M-O-R-I-A-H, the T H E medium M E D I U M dot com where you can connect with her and schedule your own reading. So I definitely encourage that. Okay, I'm going to talk uh, really quick and about a, we're going to do a little commercial break here. Our podcast is brand new and I do not have sponsors yet, but I do anticipate and hope in the future to have a couple people sponsoring me. So I'm going to tell you about this product that I found that I absolutely love. It's a product called Magic Eraser. You can find this at most stores in the household cleaning department. It would be kind of near maybe the sponges and it comes in a little red and white box and they're little white sponges. They're not very thick and what you do is you take them out of the box and you wet them and wring them out and you can remove all kinds of marks. So if you have marks on your walls and you don't want to repaint your walls, the, this magic erase will definitely take those little marks away. One time I had little marks of red on my hardwood floors and I didn't know what they were from and I realized I had worn a new red toenail polish that was somehow scraping off onto the floor and I tried several different products to remove these little red marks and I certainly did not want to use fingernail polish remover on them. I was afraid I'd ruin my finish. But wouldn't you know, Magic Eraser actually removed those little red marks. So it's a great product. I found it several years ago. It's been a godsend for me in a lot of different areas. They kind of disintegrate as you use them. So don't worry about that when that happens. They're not very expensive and you can always buy more. Manufactured by Mr. Clean. It's called Magic Eraser. You can find it in your cleaning section and hopefully that helps you out in some way. Okay, let's continue on. I would like to talk about the second medium that I've had some experiences with who I also think has been just incredible in my life. So there is a man named Thomas John. His full name is Thomas John Flanagan. He is a medium that I found when I was looking on YouTube for videos about near-death experiences and somehow I happened across episodes of a show he had called The Seatbelt Psychic. It was such a good show. I binge watched the series. He poses as a rideshare driver. He picks up unsuspecting customers. They get in his car and then he very quickly tells them that he's a medium and offers healing messages from spirit. Some of them are connections to their passed away loved ones. Some of them are actually just psychic messages that he's receiving about their life. It is that was such a, a cool show that I began seeking out more information about Thomas and I found him on his website, Thomas the Medium, and he had a book that I um, that I read 
and he also has a new show called The Thomas John Experience, which you can watch on CBS All Access. This man has an incredible skill and ability to name names of passed away loved ones. And after I saw his amazing ability to do this, I mean, I'm not talking about just like common names. He named a woman's Japanese mother-in-law, which was a, a, a name that I would not have been familiar with. He will name names of great grandparents. Um, so these are, are not, it's not information that he could necessarily look up online. I mean, everybody now has a social media presence and I always worry about that with mediums. Like, is somebody going to go and research me if they have my name? There's so much information online. You know, I have a Facebook page, I have an Instagram page. It'd be, be very easy for somebody who wanted to deceive you and take advantage of you to go and research um, information about you. But a good medium will give you information that they never could have found online. So you'll know very quickly when you're having a reading if somebody is the real thing or not. Thomas John is absolutely the real thing. After I saw his Seatbelt Psychic show and read his book, I decided I wanted to have my own reading. And I participated in a group reading. This is where Thomas gathers a group of eight people on the phone and he talks in general about his abilities and then he gives each individual person a 15 to 20 minute reading. And as the participants, you have the ability to listen in to everybody else's readings. And he believes that everybody can receive healing messages from even listening to somebody else's reading. But when he came to my turn, I was absolutely blown away that he named eight names of people in my life. Some people were alive, some people were dead. A couple people, people that I was not connected to in any way, shape, or form on any type of social media. There's no way he could have known the name, names of people he brought up. Well, I think what one of the things I thought found was most incredible was um, I was dating somebody at the time and he named my, my boyfriend's name. He named his my boyfriend's ex-wife. He named my boyfriend's mother and he named my boyfriend's son. Oh my gosh, that was absolutely incredible. Like how could he do that? But he is so good. I also had an incredible experience attending a live show where he does readings on a stage. There are about 100 people in the audience and he's directed to whoever he is getting messages from, from spirit. He'll name names and you'll have to connect and he brought Mark through in that reading and it was very special because as he was standing up on stage, he said, oh boy, they're giving me this song. And he said, I hate it when they do this because I'm not a good singer, but he said, it's a song from the 80s and it's nothing's going to stop us now. And I said to Thomas, oh my gosh, that's connected to my pass away loved one, Mark. And Thomas said to me, how in the world is that song connected to your passed away loved one? And I said, well, Mark Abrahamian was the lead guitarist of the band Starship. He probably played that song 500 times in the 14 years he toured with that band. And I think Thomas was even blown away by the incredible ability of spirit to deliver a message that specific for me. Thomas was so incredible. My experiences with him were so incredible that I invested in what Thomas calls a psychic remodel. He doesn't do these very often, but I was able to have an entire day, a six hour day, where Thomas came to my house in Arizona and spent a whole day with me. It was an experience unlike anything I've ever had before. Mark is one of my primary spirit guides and he delivered lots and lots of healing messages. Thomas talked specifically about medium readings that I'd had in my life. He talked about passed away loved ones. He gave me healing messages from some of my passed away loved ones. That was, um, some of them were life changing for me. And he talked a lot about my own intuitive abilities and even had me do some exercises with him to f further develop those intuitive abilities within me. It was just an absolutely incredible day. I just can't speak highly enough of it. I think that when we get confirmations from signs and mediums are able to connect to our loved ones, I think that it's very healing for us and it's just such a wonderful experience.
All right, I'm going to take a, another quick commercial break here. And I want to talk to you about the book that I referenced in connection to Thomas John. So Thomas is, like I said, a psychic medium, and he has a book out there that you can buy on Amazon called Never Argue with a Dead Person. And in this book, Thomas talks a lot about his childhood and his upbringing and how spirits would come to him when he was very young and how he developed his gifts over time and why he thinks these messages are so healing. So I highly recommend this book. You can get it on Amazon. And if you would like to connect to stories of Thomas John and stories of Mariah and other mediums that I've had readings with over the years, I have a, a part two in my book, Signs Surround You, Love Never Dies, that talk about all the different readings that I've had and the stories connected to them. Okay, so we know that our loved ones absolutely want to connect with us. So how does this make us a more powerful soul? Because this is what this show is truly about, about helping you increase the power of your soul. And I think it helps us because any time we can heal wounds that we are carrying around with us, those wounds and those feelings of sadness and lack and loss and guilt and whatever we're carrying with us lower our vibration. When we have the ability to heal our wounds, we actually begin to feel better about ourselves. We begin to feel more loving and we begin to own the own power of our soul. And this is extremely healing, raises your vibration and makes you feel so much better. So if you have lost a loved one and you didn't get a chance to say goodbye, I know that this can haunt you. Sometimes we feel when somebody has an illness or a suicide that we could have done more. If we could have done this one thing, maybe they would still be around. Maybe they would have seen a doctor sooner. Maybe we could have intervened. We should have known that somebody was so sad that they were going to take their own lives. But you need to know that when people leave this earth, it's their time or they wouldn't leave. If it wasn't their time, they would have had a near death experience and they would have come back. They wouldn't have been successful with a suicide. Part of uh, free will and part of our, our lessons allows us to make choices when we leave, but when it's not our time, it doesn't work and we don't leave. And if you were able to do something that prevented somebody from leaving when it was their time, they'll just have another exit point soon after that time because when it's their time they're going to go i want you to remember and i want you to fully understand that when our loved ones leave us they are still around us they never truly leave us they are just now in a new place on the other side they love us and you do have the power to see your own signs from your loved ones and i will talk about signs more in another episode now, I know that there is a cost associated with having a reading with mediums, and some mediums can be very, very expensive. I have had medium readings that were less expensive and some that were more expensive, so you do have to use your, your budget. My sister gives intuitive readings, and I think she is an incredible medium. She is definitely guided and helps me a lot, and you can connect with her. Intuitive readings by Stephanie.com. I think her readings are $99 for an hour. I know mediums, though, that go up to as much as $800 for an hour and I'm not saying that they're not worth it because they are and if you have the money to spend and you want to connect with that specific medium then by all means do it but there are incredible mediums out there who don't charge as much money so there's a website that you can go to if you would like to look for a credible medium there's a man named Bob Olson who's made it his life work to interview mediums and to conduct randomized and blinded studies on mediums to rate them, rank them, and test their credibility and test their ability to deliver evidential information. And he has a website called bestpsychicmediums.com, bestpsychicmediums.com. So you can connect with different mediums that he recommends. 
So I am so glad that you tuned into this episode today about mediums, and I hope that you learned something and you have something that you can take away from this. If nothing else, just remember and know that your passed away loved ones never leave you. They love you their whole, they're good on the other side, and they can hear you whenever you want to speak with them. As always, if you want to speak to me, you can reach me on my lorimica.com website. I have a contact page and I would love to hear from you there. You can also connect with me on my YouTube page and my Instagram page under Lori Mica. I also have more inspiration for you on my Soul Heart Art page. I have that on Facebook and it's called Soul Heart Art XO. You can also go to my website www.soulheartart.com and you can sign up to receive the daily soul whispers emails in your inbox where I send inspirational messages with soul whispers and backstories that will be delivered directly to you and that's again at soulheartart.com never forget that you are a powerful soul and the essence of you is pure spirit you are a soul in a body, not a body with a soul. Part of your lesson here on this earth is to remember who you truly are. You are beautiful beyond measure, and together we can change the world. Thank you, and I look forward to connecting with you again very soon. So just be you, your beautiful soul. Cause when you love you, you don't need Nobody else singing la ti da di da oh la ti da di da di da. Life is beautiful when you know just who you are. La ti da di da oh la ti la ti da di da.